new day. Spending time with this deck surface here. I don't really want to do a lot of <laughs> prep work to it because these head gaskets were good. Let's take a look. So I go through a whole bunch of razor blades and I'm better pay attention to this. It's going to be very, very easy to scratch a deck surface, but this surface actually looks wonderful. So I spray a little WD-40 on it and then you get a brand new razor blade. Anytime you go around a coolant port and you touch where that hole is, I get a new razor blade. I want to keep the razor blade on the material and just feel it. I'm not in a hurry. You can feel a couple of imperfections there and I just keep it. Well, I'm watching on the screen, not even on the... I'm not in a hurry here. This, I will take lots and lots of time to cut this off. Not hard if you pay attention. Just pay attention, take your time, and just feel every little bit of everything. See that, see I just, that's gone. So we can take our time. What's going on over here? <laughs> like we got us a crankshaft balancer coming in the building. Oh. Who knows, we might be using it, we might be trading it in. Hell, he might not even want it. I don't know that he was very interested in it, so we might just, this might be our crankshaft balancer right here. Because it will work, it's just the drill press is messed up, something on drilling, and I'm honestly thinking I'm gonna use an angle grinder anyways to knife edge the crankshaft ears rather than drilling holes. Now that's my thought. And if it works, it works. If it throws too much metal and messes up the journals as we, uh, as I'm grinding on it, then we'll find that out. And we'll find out why people don't use a grinder to grind on the side of the crankshaft to take material out rather than drill a hole. It's pretty rough didn't really get covered that much. Right about there, let's put it down now. Oh man, it takes, it's gonna take a lot of work. Joey's got this. Come on. Whoa, killer. You got it, uh. Keep going. <laughs> no. Wait, wait, go that way. Uh, do it. Trying to figure out how to get out of there. Yeah, you're good. Yep. I guess we probably could have set it on a little angle, huh? Oh, well. Joey always has projects going on. Cody does too. Cody's not here right now. He's out, he's out enjoying the land. But they all tend to stay pretty freaking busy here, keep their projects going. Like Cody's going to rewire this trailer, put all new lights on it. In the meantime, he's back there working on the 5.4. You guys got any insight on the 5.4 low power from injectors, possibly? Injectors? Could injectors cause the power to, kind of like the excursion did, exactly how the excursion. Idle's fine, idle's good, but when you hammer on the pedal, it's just not there. So, and it's, injectors on them are kind of expensive. On a little beater job, it's a pain in the butt to uh, go to suggest a whole bunch of money when we're not exactly sure if the injectors will fix it. I mean, that's gas burner world. I don't really know. I mean, sometimes we struggle knowing if injectors are going to fix this, our things. So right now I'm going to get back to this. I'm just spending time with it, taking my time, trying to, I want every bit of this deck surface and this deck surface to be completely smooth. Look how good it looks. I mean, you know, we got a little bit trying to go down here, which is pretty normal. I mean, it, nowhere near the fire ring and combustion ring. And the sealant kind of stayed where it's at. That is smooth. That's 100% smooth. Like you can't feel that at all. So we don't go for staining. We're gonna go for smooth and then I'll go to clean. And I mean, I've got hours. I've got, I really do. I've got hours worth of work to get both of these to where they're actually good to put back together. And this seat right here, I'm, I think I'm gonna, I wanna do a quick lap real quick before we get too far. And I wanna check both these exhaust and let's just see what happened. Cause I'll get the, go ahead, I'm gonna pull this one back out and get both of them free. Make sure the guides are good, clean them all out. Once I get this, once I get all the crap off of it, I'll take it back there, clean it one more time, get all the WD-40 off and then we'll, uh, well, I might even just go ahead and do the lapping now, just wipe this off. Cause there's no use in cleaning it until after we get done lapping that in lap both of those but i mean how, 
Maybe we ought to. Maybe we ought to just pop it back together. We could go wire brush that a little bit, just, just polish around it. It'll, it'll probably clean up beautifully. And I bet we put it back in and it seals without no lapping at all. I bet it, there, it looks like there's absolutely no damage. Other than the fact that this, the valve was not pressed against the seat when combustion was happening. So you can really see it right there. See, it looks good, it just looks dirty. So combustion was happening inside of the, the exhaust port. So, you know, it was kind of blowing around everything as it was going, because, but what do you guys think? I mean, that, as for a failed valve, failed part of the engine, it does not look that bad. Could be a lot worse, even the guide. No egg shape looking in it, yeah. So let's just get back to it and keep cleaning. Oh. Got a line, vacuum line, all chewed to hell on it. It's got a bolt in it. That bottom line right there. Look at this, guys. Yeah, let me see real quick. Let me show them. Okay, the line at the bottom. That one. I'm sure a lot of you guys know all about it. That line right there that goes underneath there. It's blocked off. Shouldn't that tell us if this is right? It should go into the bung in the valve cover. Right, some damn where. Right there. I'm assuming that that hole goes into there. So we're gonna try to make that line up, right? Aren't we? Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I know, looking at that, that's coolant. That little one's coolant that goes in right above it. So maybe the one under is coolant too. Is that all coolant going through the throttle body? Maybe. Well, what the hell is that yellow thing then that my dad plugged off? I don't know. Or it could be coolant in and out. Look, there's another line right there on the back. Is that coolant out? Because if there's coolant mm. in to the elbow on that line and then coolant out on that one, maybe it's just cooling around the air. Or is that even coolant? Heck, I don't even know. Looks like coolant because it's going right over there by the coolant sensor. So is that going and plugging and going into there? And then the line right under it could possibly just be air. It could be vacuum. But I guess Joey will know everything about this by the time it's done everything i can't wait yeah here we go got us a machine here in the house yeah buddy you got a new, new machine in the house uh, a little bit more yeah we were clear way back uh right there Come back forward and we'll take all the room. Here we are, in the building.
So maybe just just snug it up where it's on that rubber, bit, yeah. To where it can move. And this right? spins around like this. Okay. So I might just keep an eye on that bolt down there, right? Yep. Okay, Remember I told you about this nice piece you use two wrist pins yep. in? Yeah. Oh, oh nice. There's my gauge. Little gauges. That's, I think that's there. Right? Mm. Dan will tell you if you do it wrong. <laughs> okay, yeah, when you insert that, yeah, you okay. got a couple of things to do. When they get cold, sometimes they'll stick. Um, most of the gauges, when we get them used, have an oil sludge on there, mm -hmm. and they get a little sticky. There's not much spray on that, right? Yeah, not a lot of travel. All right, so when you put it in there, you're going to slide it in until you know you're going to get a decent reading. Okay, yeah. Now, if you want your needle to be on top, you're going to do that when you set that fixture. Yeah, you actually it set it with a micrometer. Everybody mm -hmm. likes a zero on top, whatever. I can read a zero Most anywhere. Most of the time, I just pull wherever the heck it ends up at is where it's at. <laughs> there you go. You know? So that's your gauge. You got to have it in full and up for, far enough where you get good contact and it releases good. And it holds in there pretty. I mean, I don't mess with it, it, so it stays right. That's no it. lock nut or nothing. Yeah, unless you you don't need to change something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Travel to put one thousandths on here. Oh. It's a ten to one. Okay. So to prove that. See how far I'm turning, it, pushing it? Oh yeah. It's only going two thousandths. Huh. It's a 10 to one. So you can put that back in. So if you lose it, you gotta get the right oh, one. Oh yeah, that's that's every bit of 10 thousandths to go one. It's 10 to one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, put it in. All the way in, make sure we got. Oh, let's see, I bet you if I pull it. No, it's pretty much reads the same. Almost no matter where you put it at, huh? As long as it's in there. Yeah, that's a good gauge. Very good gauge. I pushed it out a little bit. It still went to one. To... Throwaways. These are the throwaways that get me out of a jam. Get you out of a jam. Yeah, I can clean up a hole. Tell you can tell I can get you the right man will send up here. Oh, the, what, the, oh, the shrewing sleeves, too. Yes, you got to have them. For every one. Yes. Nice. We at Capco sales don't dick around. <laughs> nice. Okay. That might be the name of the video. <laughs> well, I didn't see it. I don't. Oh, that's my enemy. Yeah. Take that right over there to the job site area for 7 3. No. You can tighten that up in whatever length you want. You see him? Make you don't have to tighten it. It'll just go in there and wedge in there. Outside of it? Outside to outside? Where are your bolts at? On the inside? Yeah, bolts on the inside. Then you probably want to go outside. But I guess it's Oh, I just tighten that up. But now you can use your skinny foot. Yeah, we can tighten all that up later. Okay. I mean, step it on your pedal. Watch what happens. Do you go step on it? Here. Anthony. You need a step? Yeah. All you're doing is kicking that eye lure and making it draw. Oh, okay. That's so down is tight. Recording, Anthony. Oh, that's adjustable. Sorry. Down is tight, okay. That's adjustable. This idler position pulley can be adjusted using this screw that's behind this cover. Okay. That's your belt adjustment. So what I'm getting at is if you got the machine on and the thing's still turning, mm -hmm. it's not adjusted right. You gotta back that pulley off. Back that off to let it be free when and, I'm not on the pedal. And the opposite way too, if it's just slipping on you when you're going down to the floor, okay. add a little more. Same thing with so clutch. you want it to stop with your foot off and you want it to run with your foot down. Okay. This pedal stays down all the time. You don't feather it. Yep, I'm re saying that. Mm -hmm. There, is, there is some adjustment here. Okay, yeah, so if it does start. Your, your manual will tell you all about that happy. I've never had to adjust one yet. You have it? No, not there, anyways. Okay. All right, this is your spring tension behind behind the feed rod. Left is loose. Well, it's turned all the way, all the way to left. Now, watch what happens to that indicator. No, there's no spring tension at all. It's moving all that with it. Feed rod's mm -hmm. kicking, all right? Yeah. Okay, now you push it and then add some tension to it to try it. No tension on this knob, right? When you're pushing? You know, yeah, turn that no up. tension. Oh, okay. What do you got? Oh, yeah, I, I saw it. Yeah. 
I push it all the way up. Like when you go move. Well, you, you got to use some force. Yeah. I mean, it'll move. Barely. But it's all dependent on the size mandrel you're using, how much tension you put behind it. The smaller the mandrel, do I need to speed up or slow down? It's not speed, it's strictly spring tension. Oh, just pressure. Yeah. Okay. So it's not necessarily dependent on... Like, you put a little bitty tiny mandrel on there and turn it up to eight, it'll just pressure. twist it off when it catches, yeah. So the speed is not as important as actual pressure. Well, speed comes into play in the diameter and the mandrels. That's why you have so many selections here. Yeah. Now we need to get a bucket of that oil in there. That's only going to take it so fast. Don't overflow it. And it's probably a little chill. How strong is that? Fair. What is that on it? Fair. I'll take a little scoop out of it. In there, so it'll like drop it and fumble it. Where's a little cup of things? Give me a little cup of oh, okay. Okay. They're messy machines when you let them go crazy. Pretty watershed in there, right? It'll hold it. Yeah. Right. As long as you've got all the plugs and everything tight, that's something we'll like to check. Should this thing, I mean, this should be empty all the time. When it's done, it drains all the way out. There's nothing in it. depends if you got a level. A little residue in it. Yeah, the residue, you can get as much out of it as you can. Of course, it settles to the bottom of that tank. The pump is up three inches or so off the bottom of that tank. Thanks for sitting there, too. It's not bolted in, I think. The pump, you know, if you, if you look with your flashlight when you're doing there, you can see how that pump's mounted. This round belt that's on the back of the machine actually drives that pump. I see that. I just saw the rope. It's like a rope, isn't it? It's a rope belt. Yeah, going all the way down, pulling around. So there's no electronics on the pump. And if you open that pump up, there's no impellers. It's just a spinning disc. It's just a friction pump. I can't believe it works. And no electronics. It does. No electronics. So there's nothing. Rope off. Is that down here? Should I do that down here? Or I should it's right, right here. I've been to do it for about 10 years. Okay, right on. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you'll do a ton of rocks, shit. <laughs> 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 a little bit at a time. Because it doesn't, once it's filled, I mean, it's only pumping out of here. It's not, it, it can keep up easy. Because oh, yeah. I'm kind of flooded. Yeah, there's not a lot of flow up here. There's not a lot of flow up So I can see how much oil's in there. Nope, I can still see screen. All right, let's keep pouring. It's at the, I mean, it's at the bottom flap. I can't see any screen anymore. It's still pouring in a little bit. Oh, it's covering it. The manual, manual for you in my truck. I'm trying to let me forget those, but what we gotta do now is set up your gauge and set up what we're doing. Okay. So setting up your gauge, there's a little box here that has your gauge points. The points, okay, yeah, I lost that three times. That These are your gauge points. Okay, you got two small ones, two large ones, all right? See how one's black, one's silver? Mm -hmm. See how one's silver and one's black? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty much fixed that, isn't it? Okay, so the short little pins have that length of top shoe. They have that length. See the difference? Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's the short. That's, that, that's what's going to rub on your rods. So I don't know with no. I don't know if we can make it. I should get the manual and it will tell us if we can make size without having to put any of those on there. We might. might be able to. I'll do it because it's small. Yeah, it's small. It almost touches it. Let's see what it does. Where it is. Hang your rod on there. Yeah. Let's see if we can get to it without putting fingers on. Ah, it touched it. It moved. Feel it? I mean, that's strong enough. I can just hang it right. I, or I mean, I'll, I don't really want to hang it there, though, right? And being angled rods like that, it's angled. hard to get it. Yeah. Like maybe I should have just, something bigger on it. Maybe. No, it's nature of the beast. I mean, you could you could use bore gauges and all that, but you see where your contact points are. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a big end of the rod. You're up against it. the face, yeah. but you're not on that pin end. So you're going to have to get the idea about wiggle and waggling to try to find your high side reading. Mm -hmm. So when you rotate a rod, one, one finger measures, the other one's static. So when we're, you're trying to check roundness on the big end. you got to force it that force way. Force it that way, gotcha, yeah. And up. Okay, and, and up. And up. See what I'm doing there? 
I still don't have engagement with that. Oh, okay. Okay. We don't care about this. We I just want, we want to make sure these points fit and work. So, so they I do. will. So I don't even have to. I don't. You have don't have to put fingers on. But let's put a set of fingers on so you know what the hell you're doing. Let's put the big ones on. There's two. These are called centralizer rings. See the slot in there? The slot is designed so you can put a wrench and make adjustments. Okay. Do the small set there. I'm sorry. This one does just these points here. So what you're going to do is bring these points back in, put that piece on there, and you see where the slot is? It's right. It's right on it. Yeah. And, and you grab that wrench, and you'll feel there's a little set screw under it. That little guy? Yep. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I can. You see how you're turning it? Yeah. What you're doing is you're bringing it into the center of the bore by by adjusting that. Take it back to where it was, kind of. All right. So you're going to move that in until you can get this ring on there and get a load on it. So this one, wait, you lock that? That's a lock. Lock, down is unlock? Yes. Down is unlock. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm all the way in there, aren't I? Yeah, we're all the way in, isn't it? Yep, that's out. Okay, that's going out. And that's in. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're going to okay, go so in until now, that goes this, on. Oh, it is a long ways. Yep. Okay, so when, it, when it can, push it on. Okay, it's on. Do I have a load on my, my gauge? I gotta put that. That one down the bottom. Yeah, huh? that slot's gotta go in the bottom before I do all this. Okay, slot's on the bottom. Okay, start over. Let's bring it up to a zero. All right, what you're going to do is run that wrench up there and you're going to move that up and down. You're going to see this needle move. Mm -hmm. You want to go past and find your and high back. side reading. And, okay. Get into it. Right there, I got it. Okay. okay, turn it. Keep turning and you'll see it come up and fall back down. Keep turning until okay. it falls yep, back right down. Right there, yeah. That's your high side. That's nice. your center. Okay. So put it on center. So take it. Just fit, find it back and right. Oh, oh, it moves a lot when I go back, doesn't it? Do it again. Find your center. Okay, you're within a, a tenth. Anyways. That that's about it. It's about oh, to start jumping. Okay, down. so what you did is that's called centralizing your points. The points are now directly in the center of that no ifs, ands, or buts. We're measuring the center of the board. They're ninety degrees off each other. Abs yes. One eighty. You're in the center other. of the board. Now this one is for the other two sets of points. Pull that off. And you'll see where this one comes into contact. That's, that, that's with fingers though, right? Back here. Oh, so I'm gonna move my points back to there. Yeah, put some points on. Okay, let's see. Are they and those are the long points. You want the longer block, right? Okay, yeah. So the long, if I do this, will I even do this with a smaller one? Use this? Depends on the range in the book I'll tell you. Because I might not. Okay. There's three different ranges that gauge will do. The long one's up, that's gonna, that's, Gotta line it up. It needs so, to be in alignment with the other so ones. So it'll be like that, right? Nope, oh, no. it's not in alignment. So I'm gonna have to go to the other hole, right there, right? Yes. And I go to the middle one on that. You're on that hole there. Yeah. Is that the same size? <laughs> Should be. You gotta have your, your wrench for your gauge. That's nice. Snug it up. Yeah, just tight, just a little, right? So now you're gonna centralize those points doing the same thing. Here? Or no? So bring that back in. No. Oh yeah, I'm here. You're, you're oh locked. shit, okay. Unlock. Until so you can get that ring in. So you can get a wrench on that slot. Damn, that's right. So when you're working a gauge, you have to remember, I told you wrong, you don't you don't push up. When you put your gauge on there, you gotta push against these two, because this is the Just one those measuring. Two. This is yeah. the one measuring. You gotta push, you always while you're measuring, you gotta be pushing I down on those that. two. So, slots on the bottom. Bring it up till you get a reading on your gauge. Bring up your point. Okay, will this go all the way through and touch that? Is yeah. that what I'm doing? I'm gonna touch that, huh? Yeah, the one in the back, yeah. Oh, shit, okay. Let me... It should be lined up perfect for you. But you gotta bring your gauge yeah. into contact. Oh, yeah, no shit. Okay, okay, okay. Go there and, t and extend it out. And keep it right. We'll turn it right here, keep it pushed right there until that gauge starts to move, let's say. Oh, the gauge won't move because I'm measuring. Oh yeah, it will. Keep going. Right there. Bingo. So, word of advice for you, when you're moving those fingers and you get to where you get a reading, back the pressure off. 
Because okay. we don't want it to creep. So say I go get right there. Zero, get a zero reading so you can calibrate it. Okay, back that off. Of, there's, there's play in it, back it off. Yeah, there right there. Perfect. Okay. Now you're not preloading it where if some vibration or something doesn't make it go any further. So, no. <laughs> no, yeah, I need to centralize now. it. Now I need to centralize it. By pushing down this direction. Down there, push that in the middle. And then I find the high side. Find the high side reading. I turn it until it goes that way, but maybe do it twice. Just so it starts to come kick back. Yeah, do it twice. I do it twice. Find Each it the first time. Each one of these time. lines is a tenth of a thousand. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to go past it, come back, and then go to do it, it again, again, and I'll remember where it was and just take it back up to it. You got it. So that's how you centralize your points, okay? Funny enough, guys that have horns, a lot of them never were showed how to do that. Really? Like, what are these rings for? You know, it's, without reading the book, you don't know. That's yeah. a new bushing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna be honing for a good minute. Well, yeah. Learn how long it cuts. Now we're gonna start the with the man. <laughs> Almost boring there, isn't it? Uh, it'd be nice to be bored now. Yes. Where's that man? Give me a used rod. Just go find a used rod somewhere. Out completely. Will this screw come out? Yep. Okay. Okay. Now we want that block out of there. You gotta kick it out. Look at this. This is how stones go in and out. Damn, could be worse, huh? So what, what, let's see what number's on this stone. PL5, that's a roughing stone. Rough, okay. The PL5. Mm -hmm. They got automotive numbers, they got industrial numbers, but it can only go back in one way. Now, look, if we were going to use it. two stones like you were doing a piston, mm -hmm. all we would do is put this back here. And put another one right next to it. Put two stones. All right. But then you're going to need to have extra shoes. This is a new shoe. You would have to keep your stones and shoes together. You can't mm -hmm. use it for one stone and then try to use it for two. Because gotcha. they're uneven. Yep. Okay. So, I, I mean, yeah. So, so basically run that stone back in there. See the pin on the bottom of your tension block? See the holes in the bottom here? Yep. That lines everything up and you put your screw back Okay. In. So we got the little notch right there. That's for the second stone. You got me. That's not it. Right there should be the, the one. Oh, there. right there. Damn it, barely fits huh? Oh, it's kind of tight, huh? Right there. Keep trying. There it is, right there. Okay. Oh, okay. See your wedge is all the way in. The wedge. This is the wedge that travels. It makes that stone go up and down. So now you can put your tension. Back. Okay, so I need the wedge pulled back and the stone pushed forward. Well, yeah, until you can get everything together. Now you got to put that in. And the whole Just line it up, and then you run your set screw once you're bottomed out. Everything lined up. And you got to snap it in a little bit of effort. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now line that hole up. Go to the bottom. Right there. I should have left the freaking screw on the freaking Allen. I took it off. So when you put that Allen, this is this is made out of a zinc material, so it will strip. So make sure okay. everything's lined when you start. Just feel it by hand and... Because it came out easy, so it... Yeah. If I got, yeah. You're not just going to hold that block in. Just, just sit right there and feel it. And that's just the tension so that when I adjust the tightness yeah, just on that... Bottom. To make it go out more? No, the wedge oh. does that. Oh. Push that wedge in with your screwdriver and see what happens to your stone. Yeah, buddy. Oh, it goes a long ways, too. You got an eighth inch travel. And that is hooked to that right there. No. Basically? That no? is hooked to that feed rod that's in there. Well, but adjustable by that. That's only adjusting the spring. This is moving it in and out. Oh yeah, it sure nailed it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the movement. That's the movement. This is the spring tension. So that's going to really adjust size and that's going to adjust how fast I get there. No, that's just going to adjust the spring tension behind the mandrel, not how fast. Okay. It has nothing to do with speed, but if you don't have enough pressure, you're pissing in the wind. Yeah, I think if I you have it. too much pressure, you're breaking something down or not doing the job correctly. Okay. I to get a feel for how hard is the hardest you can do and still be productive. This has the eccentric sleeve on it. Remember I showed you that before? That allows you to take some of the run out depending on where you put it on the mandrel. Okay, and I'll have to see what. So when you're loading the mandrel, you've got to get this all the way out. Even a little further than that. See how that, that catch is out past the flat here? Bring it out a little bit more. 
that's where it has to be when you load. So on these other manuals, you don't need you don't need any adjuster, but that needs to be out past the back. Okay. And let's try loading this one first so you can get the feel of it. Oh yeah. Put pedal down a little bit, puts it neutral so you can turn it because you got a brake on there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Screw on the top. If you look inside there, you see that wedge? I see it, yeah. Okay. We want to back it in all the way, which it is now. Okay. We don't want to jam any screws or anything. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna run see the flap? Yep. See the screw? That was, that's what holds it. You want to run it at about a 45 degree angle from where it's going to engage. Go in Kick it up a and then turn it. Now I gave it, there's a special wrench I set. Right here. Yeah. Snug that up. So basically you're just turning it so that that lip it locks catches behind that lip. it. So it yeah. locks behind it. And how do you tell if you've got that lip? Okay, I can't right pull there. it yeah, out. Pull. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sometimes you're going to fight this. And sometimes it's going to be lucky like me and get it the first time. <laughs> right there? That's it. Okay. No, it's got a flat on it. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. Like you said, you don't have to be a lumberjack. Okay. No lumberjack hands. So, spin, spin that out and see what happens. Oh. I can see it all moving. See the wedge travel? Wow, a little bit moving. too. Boy, it was a, no, I guess we're dealing with 10 to 1,000 pence. Mm -hmm. That's how you load a mandrel. Now, the key is... Unload it now. Get that thing all the way to the back. Don't jam your screw too tight. Good wanna, idea. Yeah, don't jam Just it too tight. Just feel it where it stops. Yeah. Now, get your mandrel out. Can't rotate it until you get in neutral position. Too far down. There you go. Why don't I listen? It? Well, did oh, it rotate? Yeah. Rotate it around. Yeah, you're talking. All right, all right. Kind of like a little clutch. Just let me get it free. So you're going to have to rotate it to extract it, right? Mm-hmm. You twisted it left, left loosen. Go left this right. way. I might go a little more. Yeah. We know we did. We're far enough now. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. You got to fight them a little bit. All right. Get your foot off of there. There you go. <laughs> did you get into it? It's in. It's it's well. You're on the flat. It I'm looks on like. Flat. Now pull. When no, you get it wasn't. Together. Just oh, it. All you okay. do is push it in. Now yeah. it'll still hone, but it won't retract. Oh, well, I won't be able to get it off. Well, you'll get it off, but you'll try scratch it. it all up again. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, let me try it one more time. One yeah, more time. You, one more time. Do it several times. But get it in there, and when you start rotating, you'll feel it drop. Don't let it go past that. Get okay. it back in there all the way. Then once it drops it. a little, I can go. If you go too fast, you're just pushing the wedge in. Yeah, and I go like that, so mm -hmm. I'm above it. And you go against the stop. It's not in all the way. There you go. There you go. Now this wiggle yeah. waggle yeah. thing, you got it? Yeah, it's hooked. Yeah, there you go. That's that's how you that's how okay. you do all mandrels are the same way. Lock that little tab in, come back this way. Okay, so tab has to be out. But some mandrels like that other one are different, aren't they? Um, I say right. Yeah, see that doesn't stick out the ass end, but it sticks out past the flat, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. and that's what's key. Load that one. Come all the way. I think so. Nothing will really fall off except the center ring, right? Yeah. I mean, I've already had it set, so. Where's my flat at? Now you're talking. That's my flat. Well, look how you got to hook it. That I'm hooks. Done. I'm done. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's first time. It's my first day here. <laughs> okay. Turn it. See this handy dandy tool does a lot of things. See yeah. that crazy see that crazy hook there? Is that the hook it? Guess what? It'll grab that. Okay. <laughs> you know, it'll go in there and you can turn it and grab it. I just remembered that this morning. I said, you know, I don't know if I got a wrench in there for me. Okay, hey, tricky little guy. Get that pushed out. Okay. 
gone. A little more difficult those kind, aren't they? Hey! Oh. You got the click, but you nice. didn't get the hook. <coughs> You know the process is figuring out your technique now. Figuring out how my hands need to go to actually make it happen? Mm-hmm. And you know it works because you did the other one. So when you get frustrated, you say, ah, wild turkey, I'll come back and do it <laughs> Okay, on this right now. Okay, I'm going over. Like, are you on the flat? Not oh. yet. So I need to be on the flat before I even go in. No, you need to get it all the way the to same. the back That's... and then rotate to the flat. Ooh. You know you have Did you one. push your little thing back in? Yeah, it's out. It's out? Okay. Mm -hmm. Like how much? Like that much or should I go even more? You need to be that? about 45 degrees. Oh, okay. Get it in there. I don't know if we got this too far back. Or not. Hard to click. Seriously? Heard someone click. They're still good. I'm gonna move that out. Just a wee bit. Moving it out of, oh yeah, okay. Just a wee bit. Because I had it way back, right? Yeah. And you're supposed to, that's what they tell you, is put it all the way to the back. Ah. Uh, now pull on got it. Got it. I think same. I got it. Yeah. That's it's just going to take some technique. That's the one we're going to use. Put your screw in. Don't unhook it now. We got it in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> okay. These are new stones, new shoes, right? So what we're going to do, without the machine on, we're going to put the pedal down, and we're going to bring this up. We're feeding that stone out right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring it up till we get contact. And I forgot your shims, but okay, I got contact. So I just want to touch. Just now touching. Feel it? Yeah. Uh, it's my foot pedal. Oh yeah, nice. Pull it. Yeah. Okay. So what we're gonna do is run this machine without any oil, just to drag it and see what's touching. Okay. So get off the foot pedal. Down off of it. Step on. See what happens here. Okay. Right. Move. You don't want to jerk your wrist off. So, foot pedal's all the way down. It's kind of dry, so it's going to squeeze. Just add a little tension to it. Let's see where we are. What are we touching? Oh, Here. yeah. That looks pretty good, right? Wow, yeah. Roll around to the stone. No, should I, by hand or just by the pedal? Whatever uh, you want to do. Uh, it's got it. Oh, you said don't put it on there, though. Yeah. Fucking riding on that glass. All right, so you're going to need to straighten this out a little bit. Just the bottom. Yes, with the truing sleeve. So now you're going to want to line up your. Now this can this can go anywhere you want it to go. On either side, it can even be over there. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a clip for it. So you you're going to want to arrange that where you want it. The torque bar needs to be close to the spindle, so it can either go here or here. And put your oil. So that's the next thing you got to decide how you want to rig it. Uh, and then also you can put them here and shoot off the end when you're using a big old long handle. And shoot off. I can blow it that way. Back, back towards the machine. If I'm going this way, you won't need that with this little stuff, but they make five stone mantles. That's when the tray is all the way out. Just raise that spin again. Rotation, it says it wasn't there. So I need to be on top, right? Well, you need to rig up your coolant. You can't reach it where you are without shooting straight across the shop. Yeah. So where are you okay, put? let's rig up the coolant. Oh, oh look at you, fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now. Okay. And we probably want to get it up a little higher so we're kind of more even with the. A little bit closer with it. Get it right up there, taller, taller. Mm. How much more will it go? Mm, that's about halfway yeah, through the okay. bar. I might as well put You're that only one somewhere use one. on. Yeah, let's just do this. Uh, maybe I should put that all the so way to the inside. Here, let me do you this. Got, this is your valve here for that one. Let me put this all the way on so it's out of the way in there. This was going because I'm only going to use this one. You got to You're all twisted there, dear. All right. Making me nervous, damn it. The stones are here, so I'm going to be somewhere it around here. Yeah, up or down, it doesn't matter. Because you're just going to shoot the mandrel. You're never going to get it under that. Oh, shit. Okay. You're I'm just, just getting, getting it wet. Ah, oh, goddamn. Okay. So I can. I mean, it could go on the bottom too. Anywhere you want. Just go up and just barely touch it. 
Just need to throw a little on it. Just got to get some lubrication on it. That's all you got to do. Okay. So, let's turn the valves off and see what we got for flow, okay? Ready? I got your main valve off. You're using this one. So I'll turn the main valve on some. I'll open this up. Now, if you want more, turn the valve open. Whatever you want. So I should just shoot this. Which one am I? This one? Aim it up. To this the way's mantle. close to the right. Yep. Aim it up and just turn it on just enough so it'll... Add a flow so it hits the mantle. Yep, just like... Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep oh, going. Oh, shit. We're running out of juice to turn this one. That's your flow control valve back here. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here, yeah, let's let's open that one up and then just one spot. Here's one. Like, Here's one, Dan. Or I mean, should I go past it and like shoot it along it? You put it any way you want, as long as you get oil on the stone. All right, that's what matters. Well, I'm sure we'll actually afford it, Dan. <laughs> wonderful. So we're gonna true it a little bit with that dress truing sleeve now. Remember what I told you: put the motor off. With the motor off, you're going to put the truing sleeve on here, foot pedal down until you just feel tension. Okay, yeah. Is there a... No. Nope. You don't want the foot pedal on until you get it on there. Oh, because it's free. God damn it, I keep forgetting that. Okay, Step it's on free. Stepping pedal. on a Titan. Are you making any? No. Yeah. Just, just, just Don't barely. grab it too hard. It's going to break your wrist. Just so it touches. It don't need to be tight. Finesse. That's pretty touchy. That, that's okay. very, very touchy. Right now, there. foot pedal off, turn it on, hang on to that, and then step on the foot pedal. Shouldn't have very much torque at all, right? Shoot oil on it. All over. Oil's going on it. You're fine. Just, just do it. You're okay. fine. Yeah. Okay, so rotate. And then add tension. Okay, as I'm going to feel it. Not very much. Yeah, not, there's not a lot there. I can get some. Just a little There you go. I need to be. Like almost barely holding it when I'm screwing it up. Yeah, you want to be able to hold it. Then. It's there, it's there, right? It doesn't matter, you got a little going everywhere. It's all fine. I mean, where I'm oh, cutting, as far as where? where? Yeah. yeah, you want to overstroke about on this one, probably about three eighths to a half inch. Oh shit, I'm going to wait too far. About there. Yeah. There. You got it. There. Now, should I back off a little bit before I stop? I think you're done. Just stop it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Off. Yeah. Now you're ready to put a rod on. Yeah. Except you got to back it off a little bit when you do a rod. Same procedure. Put it off, it. put it on, just tag up. Now doing stuff like you're doing now, we don't know how deformed that circle is. Yeah. It's still round or not. Oh, so you're going to want to be cautious when you start out because you don't want to chip stones. Because it'll break that in a second. It, it, well, it can, but it'll probably rip it out of your hand unless we put your torque bar on there. Yeah, That's why you had that check valve. Look. It bleeds back through. Oh, because it drains down? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's when you get that big blurb to start with. <laughs> Maybe oh, it was a good idea. Oh, that big amount? Yeah. <laughs> Hell, let's, let's see what it does. Because uh, if I turn it on right now, it'll start flowing, right? Yeah. The one will. Not at all, huh? It didn't splash out. Good. I don't, we don't, I don't care about that check valve. It'll work just fine for me. Well, son, I never put one on. Shoot it like I mean it can hit the bottom. It stops. Goes on the bar I'm putting in now. Put the bar. Oh, put your, get the put bracket on. on. Put your same bar spot, in. you think? Same spot? Yeah, it seemed to work alright, didn't it? It was kind of I mean it was right next to it. But Whatever you want. Probably. I mean I guess I can adjust it that way too. Huh? I can move it a long ways this way and that way. Make yourself happy. Are you happy yet? I am. Happy. Happy. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, this is all I had to Never ask you if you were happy. He knew better. <laughs> he knew better. Didn't he? Don't ask me a question. You're not gonna like the answer. See yeah, that bar is offset, so you can just tilt it. The bar. So yep. put that crooked end in there. And I can come now. Out. Lay your rod on there and position that where you want it. Which way? What do you think? Doesn't it matter. Doesn't even matter. But you want your torque bar or something that's consistent like that. You're on the beam. Everything's happy. Everything's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't really need to be real close. No, you don't want it close. Okay, so maybe but like... But you don't want it on some, you know, uh, asshole area or something. Yeah, you got a where flat it's... part of a beam. That's a good case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, plenty should, strong. All that does is take the torque so you don't have to. So I can just sit here and just... Mm -hmm. 
So the truing sleeve was a lot smaller than what we just honed, right? Mm -hmm. Same procedure. Put the motor off, you're going to bring it up to contact. I'm bringing it up to here. Foot pedal uh, foot down. Foot pedal down, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'll feel it. Yeah, I mean, I touch. should move this though, right? I should kind of move. Or I just, would, because you don't know how round know, it is. Yeah. You know? I would go like this. Oh, okay. You don't want you to get yeah. close, because you don't know how round it is. And we haven't set your spring up yet either. That's all the way loose at least. It's all the way loose now. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. Oh, shit. Come back up to contact. It takes a while for the wedges and the feed rods mm -hmm. and everything to catch up with you. So the first time you hit, I hear it. You're there, right? Yeah, I should be on it. I mean, you can always run, it. You can always run it now and then feed up to it. Button down. No, when I turn it on, pedal up. Pedal, pedal up. up. Pedal up when I turn on. Where, where would I keep? Just. Well, you're using that mandrel. It needs to go back on it when you're done with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just put it over it for a all right, so I'm on low spring pressure. I'm making contact. Yeah, and we know right off the bat, zero or one is not enough. So let's kick you up to about three and a bit. Okay. That should give us enough to do, and you can add more. When I'm doing it. Right. When I'm what doing it. What we don't it. want to do is we don't want to bottom out the spring, because then we took the giveaway. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So three may not be enough, but give it a whirl. Set it up like you normally do. Basically, you're ready to roll, right? Always, you? Well, your foot pedal's not down, so you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to look stupid doing well, it. Well, you got people staring over you. And she's oh, yeah. That's, you. Oh, my God. I just saw it. That's how you break stones right there. Well, it doesn't help. Right? <laughs> Adjusting that thing with your foot not on it? Yeah. I bad. just saw it. I, yeah. That's it, a bad deal. Could have broke it. Could've. Broke your arm? Right, just by letting off in the pedal. I don't know about that. You got it, didn't you? You got the pedal Don't down? When you just I get know. it. It just felt like it was too tight. <laughs> You're not wiggling it enough. You need I to can be... spin that while it's running. You can. But if I leave too much play, it bounces that. around, yeah. right? So do it now. Run it and, and then catch up with it with your... First time hitting the go button in the building. Ready? Hand. Now, let me show you how to do a rod or work pieces. If I grab it out here and push and pull it because there's going to be a little torque, what did I just effectively do? Here. No. Look at what I'm doing. Mm, you're making, making a tapered hole. I need to be grabbing it here. Okay, right yep. at the work. Right at the work. And your whole goal is not let it do this. You want to stay stable and even when you're owning. That's the trick. Okay. It's operator dependent for sure. Should I? Give it a whirl. You got more bushings, right? Mm -hmm. We know we got to take a lot out of them. Yeah, yeah. Give it a whirl. Okay. Good there. Okay. Take our oil. Good oil enough. Flowing. Hold it. No torque, huh? Nothing. Feed up into it. You'll feel it. No torque. You can almost hear it now. Keep going. I hear it now. No, it just got. Now, stroke it correctly. You're going to stroke about a quarter inch, not quite, maybe an eighth inch off either side. You have to use the full length of the stone. To Otherwise, it it'll wear out. Yeah. And Get how? Get your hand off of that and start holding. Okay. I need more attention. Or do I? And then you come up here and you go, "Fuck." Just a little. Need more? Pump it. Get a feel for how much I can turn. You can move the material, aren't you? Look at the shit starting to come out. Of it. Adjusting that right there, I mean, that's moving the diamonds out. I'm making the size bigger. Well, I wish they were diamonds. That's how we're next. Yeah. Do they make diamonds? Still be on the list of upgrades? I keep them all on the system. I'm changing the stone out with the diamonds. Do you have any rough way to measure where you are now without having to reset gauges or anything? Because that's only got 10,000 to travel. I got a T slot. Well, get it. A T gauge. Yeah, get that and the 1 to 2 OD mic. So we can see where you're at. Watch, go two minutes with the same torque, the same feel you have, oh, and see what happens. But then I'm going to show you how this works. Okay. Uh, Doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. We're, we're keep practicing. Going. Keep going. Foot on. Nope. Nope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'll get the hang of it. 
Oh, I already broke the stone. Chipped? Yeah. How much are they? Oh, I don't know, seven, eight dollars. I got some spares for you. But I did look, that's what well, I did. You heard I it. Did that. I you did heard that right it. then. I knew I did it. Just too. use it until it's gone. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. Well, I don't want to do it to another one, damn it. I keep screwing shit up. Okay. Motor, motor on. Cooling on. That's good. Cooling's working. Yep. Now look at this. See what it's doing? It's going down. That's because I'm doing, we're removing material. So let's back it up a little bit more. Come on, stroke that bit. Don't yeah. sit there. <laughs> See what it's doing? It's giving you an idea how much that feed rod has moved. Uh, always get your foot off when you pull off. The, there's the ratio. Yeah, I there's the ratio. <laughs> now when this, when, when I, when I turn the knob and this one floats, it was floating back that way, It should way, go right? up this way and when you hone it come back down. Okay, so that is the pressure that's on the... On Not the pressure. It's the position of the feed rod. It's okay, just, just measuring the position. the position. Just where it's at. Okay, so where that's This at. is the pressure here. And you're okay, I think, on pressure. And and now when I set it, when I turn it and it goes up one and a half something, yeah. as I hone, will it go back? It'll go back? Yes, because it's going to hone and it's going to break stones down. As it hones, the rod comes out further. Okay. Remember, you got a spring back there. It's always pushing. Yeah. Starting to make some sense? It's starting to. I'm going to yeah. have to, like I messed that up just now. I pulled oh, that thing off. I put that thing off there too far and it was. Well, you had your foot down when you pulled off. Yeah. This, These are things you got to This learn. is the same kind of, this is exactly like the purpose or whatever, brand new. Mm -hmm. Except he was me. <laughs> <laughs> Running it. Crashing it. It just needs to, I, I, I run it enough to get second nature. Yes. I'll just do it. I'll know to put it in there. But get that stroking down. You start honing. Get that thing moving. You can always come up here and bump that lever. It's a little well, bit of play. Keep the rod fairly straight. It went to zero. And that's about, it pretty much ran out of travel there. So what we'll do is we'll back that spring off and you can add more travel. Now it's starting to get a read. You can actually see your honing stuff. Yeah, is this about like this? Is what yeah, I like that better. Your overstroke is maybe a little bit too far, much. But, eh, on these tapered rods, it's just going to be a man. So you ran out of travel on your, on your indicator. Oh, I almost did it. <laughs> okay, let go. <laughs> I almost pulled that. Back now measure it again, see where you are. Shut the machine off. Let's see if it's down in there. Measure it with that or measure it with that? No, that's I not don't know if you it. can do it yet. It's not set up yet because it might not reach, right? Or too big. I don't know. You'll have to try. No. Well. It just went right on that son bitch. You see that? I need to push it down that way, right? Yeah, I'm not even touching it yet. Wait, this is an old rod. Is that the old one or the new one? You fucking. That's, we're, that's we're the one home. you sent with me, isn't it? No. No, it's this is it. <laughs> this is from an old rod. No, no way. <laughs> Get it up. I was wondering you why. You can they... check and see if it will go on. I don't think it will, but who knows? I think I had it on there. But you got no reading. Oh, because it's outside of the yeah, range. It's outside the range, yeah. So let's try this. I got to go way down for this. Same procedure machine off, put it on, come up to contact, or near enough. Jesus. There you go. Okay, we're there. Okay, now, do you ever move it? Or should I go side to side when I. Wait, pedal down when you're. Pedal, no. down. pedal down when you're adjusting it. I need to do this when it's running, though. Should no, I? no. no you're you set, test, you're setting up you now. test fit it so with it off with the pedal down. It's just kind of pick it up like that when I'm doing it, or just go until side you side. feel it coming. Oh, and then it. turn it back. Release your foot pedal now. Did that pull that back? There you go. Now you try know it when again. You start out, it's going to grab, right? Foot pedal down. Mm -hmm. Right now. Now twist it How around. How tight is it? Not bad. Perfect. Perfect. And then I can give it a little more. Start tweaking it, yeah. Okay, foot, foot pedal up, start yep. it. Oil flow, the oil. Yeah. Pedal down, add right. tension, stroke like that. Go 
okay, I guess. Well, I went too far. Yeah, that's it's going to be easy. I'm going to mess. I'm going to mess a lot up going too far. Huh? Oh, I can feel the heat. It's heat. Yeah. Getting a good bite there. Oh, okay, okay. Watching the gauge go down. Once I hit zero, I'm pretty much. Well, I don't know. You can move that zero, but it just stops at certain points. Okay, so I'll just watch. Okay, still, that's where it stops. So one. You got to figure out. This is no clearance. That's with clearance. Yeah. No, it's not. You're clearance. you're zeroing that pin. You got to add the clearance to it. I add. But that what I wanted to show you is when you had that gizmo on there with them two wrist pins, you set it. Mm -hmm. That set it differently, didn't it? Yeah, it was about a three tenths. Three tenths different. Really? Yeah. Like, which which one's right? That one's right. Remember, you were over here with that big clunky thing trying yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. So you can most people set with them. No D. This is supposed to be a quicker setup. That's just to do it easier. But I can't. I'm just more anal. I just used a goddamn right. mic and set it. So put it on there and reset your zero. Yeah, that's what I would do. Well, if you can actually find your reading now, we're now we're seeing. <coughs> Yeah, you're about. Well, you like to use gorilla hands, don't you? <laughs> Why was that tight? Yeah. So you need just a tad bit more, don't you? You happy with that? Yeah. That's, that's zero now, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's where we're that's at. That's the so true now, test. So now I want it to go. Much Into want, the green. One thousand clearance. How much do you want to do? Whatever much you want to do. So now we'll see if. So how much more did we have to go for that pin? What's the hit measure? Uh, one three. Uh, thirty seven. Go get the, go read the book. One three thirty seven. How much material did it remove? So I'm gonna bang. Once we're up and I'm running, I'll just turn. Get some load on there. Two. Get the two. Get some load and it's trying but to it's be going. Cool. Oh wait, did we no, reset it? But you can't dick around with this thing. You can't eh, get it to two and move because you're already honing when you're getting there. Doing it, yeah. Yeah. Follow me. Try it. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm trying. No, I, you're doing common right. sense is wanting to push the pedal down before you start it. You know, it's like. You want to be in a race car. Oh. Okay, you were about one and a half to start with. Okay. As soon as it goes to zero, add two more and then we'll measure again. Stroke it right. There you go. Add two more. Oh, too far. No, no, you didn't go far enough, but let's try anyways. Go no, I meant uh, I pulled it off the tongue. Yeah. Go to zero and let's measure it again. So you were 9,000. Did you feel much torque? Oh, oh wait. Oh, we got some. Not really. Your body out on the gauge. Yeah, okay. so, so we know we got to do a lot more than what you just did, right? So like, and when you were dicking around, it maybe went up one thousandths, and the second time, it maybe went one and a half. So, so what I'm doing? If you can take the torque, add more. If you can take the torque. Because two. You got a torque bar. We put basic tenths out. Is all we just took out yeah. just now. Pretty basic number. So I needed. Well, we don't know because you didn't. I didn't do it. <laughs> your, your sequence is going to be alert. I need fine tune. If you need a little more flow, you know the drill, don't you? Okay. Yeah, I could go way more than two. No, hell no, not really. I can hear There's it. Load on there. Yeah, there you go. You got three now. You know, we'll do that one more time with three. Going away, yeah. Back another three on there. Oh, there you hey, go. <laughs> come on. You got a total of seven, right? Yeah, roughly. What I saw. Yeah, we'll measure it, see what you did. Stroke past a little more, or what do you think? Uh, it's looking pretty good. You feeling any difference in the torque front to rear? Ah, oh. stop now. You get to zero, you're done. Let's measure. Yeah, front to rear, so. It, it felt like it felt like that these stones on this end were lighter, which means you got to take it's smaller at that end than this end. So stay on this side a little. 
Once you learn how to run it, you kind of oh, it's it's a breeze once you get going. Once I figure out, you know, when to put the pedal down and when you're not. <laughs> well, what you just did there with a decent load, you went to 40. Oh, we're close. Wow. So that might register. It might register now, yeah. Oh yeah. Do you have to spin it or just put it on there? You need to actually try to get a high side reading, so keep dicking with it. So we went over, didn't we? You got two and a half clearance. <laughs> that's freaking cool that means that i'm not gonna have to hone like everybody said i was gonna be honing like for hours if you don't buy the right stuff yeah you probably could be so i need to fine-tune that figure out how much yeah where's the other stone no nah, we got it we over honed it yeah you did wow but you went seven and yeah, you had a good low over yes well yeah. i know you got extra bushing but now you're kind of seeing what i happened. spent 10 bucks right there yeah that's fine <laughs> is expensive. Hell yes. Okay. Sonnen's numbers. P28A55. That tells me that's a medium grit, and I'm not going to try to teach you to read all these yeah. stones. That's a medium stone. And you want to put them someplace where you can go A55. That's a medium stone. That's a medium stone. And that might be the one you try when you're finishing your size. And look you at see your how finish. that finish right. goes. Right. I don't think a fine stone on brass is the way to go. They, they make fine, but I don't think it's just bounce off it, of the gum it, it loads up. Something. And you can just look at the grid on this. That's what's in there right now is a J25, which is a roofing stone, right? I mean, the, the, the finer, it'll just, yeah, it'll just fill it with brass. It, it, won't can, cut, it, it? can load, you know, that's kind of load, the issue. Load. This is an aftermarket roofing stone from one of the oddball suppliers. If you notice something about Sunnen, when they create a stone, guess what they do? They put a they chamfer, chamfer on the edge so you don't chip the stone. The rest of these backyard sons of bitches just put a hunk on there and there's no uh, chamfer. <laughs> which means you got to be careful when you start out. So that, that would be the leading edge. It goes in like that. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do it. So it spins that way. Yeah. See this square edge, sons of bitches? Damn. So that's a true. Well, you say 50 cents or something. I mean, is that what, would this go with that? To, or this stays with. That will break them in. So it's not necessarily completely stuck to those. Diamonds, those homes, or those stones. No, you can use the range on that. That one is a, what size is it? I don't know if we wrote it down. It's a 1250, that's a 1250 mandrel. So that one may have a little wear in it, but just back it off when you break in your stone. Go mm -hmm. back in and- Yeah, because even if it makes this bigger- It doesn't matter. You're just gonna go with it. And when up. you wear it out, maybe it's another one. Because it just, it's just a piece of freaking tube, yeah. isn't it? It's just a piece I, of tube to it, run I on it. I think it's cast iron. Is it? I do. I think it's cast iron. It looks pretty good in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Julie. Yes. You want to get them organized on stones? Because I think we're going to confuse them here. Oh, oh goody. Roughing stones. Fine. Medium stones. Stone. Oh, medium. Roughing stones. Roughing. I got some other ones in the truck too. What are. Do you want a Sharpie to write on the bag? Yeah. RP6. Uh, Rough. Stones on this. It's got a retaining clip here. Okay. Yeah. All right, and it's got a retaining clip there. Seriously? Nice. And these are the, that's the throwaway, isn't it? This is the throwaway. Here's the thing, though. If this is wore out pretty close and your stone's wore out, you can't get to the maximum range. But you can. Oh, shit. Put oh, a yes. shame in there. Hell, yeah. How much do we got for shims? You got one at a time? Yeah, just one. You don't need. You don't figure out which way it goes. It's been too long. Stack them up in there and put a bunch of shams in. Well, them I mean, you could you could always trick things. But I'm not <laughs> sure that's the way to go. Gotta be this way. Yeah, we don't recommend shimming uh, diesel head gaskets Seven, either. Five and one. Okay, the finest is is coarse. See the shim in there. That's now? a five. That's how it lays in there. Okay, over the over the yeah. So if we're gonna put the stone back in, how do we do it? See the notch. See the yep, notch in the yep. stone. We're just going to lay the stone in there. Locking tab hits that. And then we're going to use our fancy wrench. We're going to hook one end. Ha uh ha. -huh. See this spring? Okay, over the bar. Yeah. Over the bar, hold one end. And then stretch it to it. And that holds the back end. Oh, that's it? That's it. So it doesn't go behind it or anything? No, that keeps it from flipping out when you're Oh, just coming it. out. That's it. Yeah, that's all it is. Okay, not necessarily pulling it. The wedge ain't in there, but... Oh. A lot of these mandrels, you can sneak a wedge in. Oh, because normally you put the and wedge And you'll in. have to redo that, but the yeah. wedge has to go on top of that. 
shim I just put in. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, here, let me see. So you can take the, you can take the shim out, pull back all the way to here, doesn't it? There you go. Now put a stone in. Oh, and that's our bar. Yeah, duh, that's the bar that fucking hooks. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clip the end. And here. Yeah. Pull it over the end of that stone. Just and, like that. And then do the spring. It's uh, laying somewhere right here. Right here. And you gotta always hold the end up or it just falls down behind it. Oh, like that? Yeah. And it'll, and it'll really bite your finger and you'll get a cut and get some honor oil in it and it'll be all better. It just sits mm -hmm. right on top of it. That's okay. all it does. Because if you don't have retainers, these are called retainers. If you don't have retainers, well, we put our shim in. Oh, because those are low. Yeah. So, so in, in theory, before we take put those in, set this on the bottom of it. Yeah, and to make sure we did something right, because I agree with you, you know, those humps are up pretty high. Pull that stone back out and let's look at something. Okay. I that pull mandrel back. has plenty. This is tapered rod bushings right here. Yeah, I got this tooling. This locates on the connecting rod. That's halfway in now. My tooling locates on there. See that hole? It locates there. And then the bushing locates on that. And then I use this guy by hand. Let me see if I get the right side. Oh, it's this side. I burned it on one side. Easy there. Okay, by hand. And then I just lightly tap it just to get it started. Now, once it starts, set that down, knock this out, turn this around, put it in there, locates on it, put that down in there, and give her the beans. There's how much gulling we got. Any of you guys know what that is? That is not bad at all. These tools work pretty good. So, hey buddy, that's the last one. We're gonna, these are Cody's now, since we got the rod hone here now, pressed in, I got to drill holes in them. Uh, sand them. Sand the sides off, then we'll be ready to hone. And I already honed one, and this is the first one. This was a new bushing. But not in one of Cody's rods. Yeah, this isn't one of Cody's. Just one we'd already There's the holes we drill in. We'll drill a little oiling hole in it. That, now as far as placement of it, that's where the 6.4 oiling hole is. So, yeah, we just drill a hole out. Just give it a little bit of oil. And then throw it on here. Most of you, I don't know, do you know how to run a rod on? Does anybody know? Because I really don't. Yeah, that's actually size for the smaller one. I have to turn it down, but I cut this and I cut too much clearance. I'm like three thousandths clear. Yeah, it's way past two over here and there's, we're like three thousand. So I got all happy thinking that I had to hone a whole bunch of material out and I was just freaking going, getting the hang of it. And next thing you know, I cut way too much out. So I'm really considering that I might just try and see how long it takes to cut however much we got out, which I don't even really know how much needs to be cut out because with the gauge here, the gauge just tells me when I'm getting close to the size. So I don't really know how much is being cut out. I'll just have to get that by feel. And so I might just do smooth grit, finish grit for the entire hone. Any of you guys know about this stuff? Would you guys go with smooth grit for the whole hone on this? It's a boring bushing. So it's got quite a bit to take out, but uh, I, I now I need to change and I, I got this home, but we did not get another shoe Right this shoe is mated with the stone and look I already crushed the stone right there because I was turning it trying to figure out what knobs do what yeah I was messing it up so this shoe my understanding is you guys correct me if I'm wrong that this is a mating pair so in order to use this shoe on the the finished grit of stone 
I would have to go ahead and put this shoe in and then re-true these shoes to this one. And since I only have one shoe, now right now I've got one set of rod bushings to do. That's it. Okay, so I, these, I don't know how much these shoes are. I think they're like 50 bucks or something. But if these do need to be with a pair and I need another shoe for this, I didn't get one, I might as well go ahead and burn this shoe and true it up to this one because this truing stone will go, this, this sleeve will go in there and just make it flat, right? So I'm debating right now. I'm weighing on, I'm gonna go read the book and double check again and make sure that I am needing to have a new shoe with a new stone. Otherwise, like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the finish shoe in, shoe in. that way I can finish these. I think I wanna see how long it takes for the finish stones to cut all of that out two sides. That's what we're doing.